up today, South Korea's defense minister sets the record straight on rumors surrounding the deployment of a U.S. missile defense system to the south. Experts say North Korea could attempt to fire more ballistic missiles from submarines as it tries to perfect the complex technology. First, with racial tensions threatening to bubble over in the United States, it emerges that the man who killed five police officers in Dallas last week was planning an even bigger attack. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Monday, July 11th here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, the South Korean government has reiterated that the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system known as THAAD is purely for the defense of the country from North Korean threats. Seoul's defense ministry has been aiming to clear up some of the controversy surrounding the decision that was reached late last week. Our Kim ji on starts us off. South Korea's defense ministry says the deployment of the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System, or THAAD, is meant solely to protect the country from North Korean threats. In an exclusive interview on Sunday with Seoul-based broadcaster KBS, Defense Minister Han ming said the main reason it's deploying THAAD is to quickly detect short and mid-range missiles fired by North Korea towards the south and to be able to neutralize them while they're airborne. The minister said that can intercept missiles some 3,000 kilometers away, including North Korea's state-of-the-art Musudan submarine-launched missiles, which have a target range of 2,000 kilometers, as well as Scud and Nodong missiles. However, the minister played down the possibility of that being used to take down a long-range intercontinental ballistic missile, the type North Korea would use to target the U.S. He also refuted the claim that that radar system with the range of only up to 800 kilometers could be used to spy on neighboring China. He said both Seoul and Washington have repeatedly explained to Beijing the ultimate purpose of that deployment as well as its limitations. Despite this, however, resistance from China and Russia is growing. Both countries warn they're considering taking military action, such as deploying missile units near the border. Kim ji Arirang News. And South Korea's Defense Minister Han ming gu is set to brief the, brief the National Assembly Defense Committee on Monday afternoon on the THAAD decision. The ruling Senate Party says the meeting will serve as an opportunity for the government to explain its decision to the public amid the rising controversy. South Korea's main opposition party has criticized the government's decision as unilateral, accusing it of failing to seek public consensus first. The Minju Party is expected to raise the issue of how the government will decide the location of the powerful weapons system. Now, it may now be possible for the South Korean military to place heavy weaponry along the inter-Korean border. Reports say the United Nations Command has amended a clause of the arms disagreement to that effect. It had banned heavy weaponry along the border, but the change was reportedly made in response to North Korea's deployment of mortar and landmines along the demilitarized zone. Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency says the situation could lead to more clashes along the border in the near future now that the ban has been lifted. It adds that the amendment has been in effect since September 2014, the first change of its kind since the arms disagreement was signed 63 years ago. Experts say North Korea's submarine-launched ballistic missile program will still require several years of testing before reaching operational status. In a report written a day after the North tried unsuccessfully to test fire another so-called SLBM, US-based North Korea monitoring website 38 North said it's possible Pyongyang will launch the missiles more frequently as it attempts to perfect the technology. The report said the increased pace of testing of its mid-range Musudan missile means the North missile development is uh, not limited only to the SLBM program and even with frequent testing more attempts are likely to fail over the next few years. On Saturday North Korea conducted yet another SLBM test just 24 hours 
after the US and South Korea confirmed the deployment of the THAAD missile defense system to South Korea. Now, in economic news, the third quarter of this year is expected to be a good one for South Korea's major listed companies. Industry tracker FN Guide compiled data for 207 listed companies for the July to September period. It says the market consensus for third quarter operating profit is about 31.9 billion US dollars. And that would be an increase of nearly 3.8% from the estimate for quarter two. Samsung Electronics is forecast to report earnings for the third quarter of around 6.3 billion US dollars, a gain of about 18.18% from estimates made three months ago. Industry watchers forecast Korea's biggest tech firm will see huge profits in the semiconductor and display sectors, which would offset sluggish sales in IT and home appliances. Now, savvy shoppers in Korea generally opt to buy products from overseas directly using the internet. But there's a visible change in the types of products being imported these days. The growing range of choices has caused a shift from the American to the European market. Our Yi Min Young explains. Online shoppers who buy directly from overseas are showing a clear shift towards European products. The Korea Customs Service says the U.S. still dominates among online sellers, but its share of the market is on the decrease. During the first half of this year, Koreans made 8.15 million direct purchases from overseas, a 3 percent increase from a year earlier. Five million of those came from the U.S., accounting for 67 percent of the total. That's an 8 percent decline from three years ago when the U.S. represented 75 percent of direct imports. Eating into the American share were imports from Europe, whose share has doubled over the past three years. During that period, direct buying from European online malls jumped 32 percent. The Korea Customs Service says that's in part due to diversifying consumption patterns among those buying from overseas. In the past, customers turned to the Internet to buy American clothes, shoes and bags. But now they're looking for a greater variety of lifestyle products such as cosmetics, coffee, chocolate and even toy figures, and from a wider range of foreign markets. The Customs Service said exchange rates might also have played a role in the change. Over the past year, the Korean currency has fallen about 3.5 percent against the U.S. dollar, which the Korea Customs Service speculates might have hurt consumer confidence. Lee Min Young, Arirang News. Now, with uh, summer in full swing, people in Korea are opening up their wallets to try their best to beat the heat. According to Shinsegae department store on Sunday, sales of air conditioners, fans and dehumidifiers between July 6th and 9th spiked about 27 percent compared to the same period last year. Sunblocks and whitening cosmetics also saw a more than 9 percent rise. Swimsuits and other summer holiday leisure items rose by 5 percent. Online shopping site G-Market says between late June and early July sales of ice packs for coolers spiked more than 70 percent. Now aside from the early summer heat wave, various early bird promotional events by department stores and online shops also contributed to the trend. But of course, uh, Overindulgence in trying to uh, keep cool can never uh, be that good. Some experts say the sharp differences in temperature air conditioning causes could put us all at risk of so called air conditioning itis. Our Park Se Young tells us what it is and how to avoid it. The use of air conditioners increases with the summer heat, with the mercury climbing to a sweltering 30 degrees Celsius on average by midday. The air conditioning in office buildings and subways, which can be refreshing, can also bring the temperature down by as much as 10 degrees. That produces a condition that in Korea is called air conditioningitis, also known as Legionnaire's disease. It's caused by the body's inability to adjust to sharp differences in temperature, such as those caused by the use of air conditioners. The condition can cause cold-like symptoms, chronic fatigue, headaches, and digestive disorders. A lack of ventilation can also cause similar symptoms. Sealing a room to keep it cool increases the concentration of harmful substances and pathogens in the air, causing headaches, coughing, sore throats and bacterial infections. 
The use of air conditioners also reduces indoor humidity, leading to irritation of the mucous membrane and dry eye syndrome. It's important to keep the indoor and outdoor temperature difference at below 5 degrees Celsius and try to make up for the lower humidity by staying hydrated. Ventilating the room every two hours is also important. People who experience symptoms of air conditioningitis should try to keep warm by putting on long sleeve shirts or pants or covering up with a blanket. If air conditioning is unavoidable, experts suggest moving around every so often, even when indoors, and making time in the day for some light exercise outside. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, uh, staying with health-related news, another case of the Zika virus has been confirmed here in Korea. Local health authorities said Sunday that a man who has lived in Guatemala since 2010 became the seventh Korean to be infected by the virus. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports the 52-year-old tested positive for the mosquito-borne disease after returning home for a short visit last Wednesday. Fortunately, though, he has shown no particular symptoms, save for uh, minor rashes, uh, and was not bitten by any mosquitoes since arriving here in Korea. The latest case comes just nine days since the last confirmed infection. Aside from Guatemala, so far, Koreans have contracted the Zika virus in the Dominican Republic, Brazil, Vietnam and the Philippines. Now, the man who killed five police officers in Dallas and injured seven more uh, was reportedly planning an even bigger attack. The city's police chief says 25-year-old Micah Johnson was angry with the recent killings of black men by police and wanted to kill white police officers. Speaking on CNN Sunday, police chief David Brown said he was convinced Johnson had wider plans. Brown also said police are trying to find the significance of the letters RB that Johnson had written in his own blood near where he was killed by a remote detonation by police. Now, as the investigation rumbles on, hundreds were arrested Sunday as Black Lives Matter protests spread throughout the United States. On a visit to Spain on Sunday, US President Barack Obama demanded an end to anti-police violence. He will travel to Dallas on Tuesday, where he will speak at a memorial service for the slain officers. Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner swept a victory in Sunday's House of Councillors election, taking a step closer to achieving Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's goal of changing Japan's constitution. Though the final results are yet to be released, Japanese media reports that the governing coalition and its allies took the two-thirds supermajority needed to amend Japan's constitution to ease constraints on military action. Um, as well as that, Abe said that the victory showed widespread support for his so-called Abenomics and added that uh, they can now move to discussing the scope of the constitutional changes. The election was the first national election since the minimum voting age was lowered from 20 to 18. Now, when most of us think of celebrities or game characters, uh, when we hear the word figures, but with the expanding usage of 3D printers, anyone can be a model and create a figure of themselves. Our Kim myung Gyun tells us more. With advancements in science and technology, people can now create and treasure three-dimensional figures of themselves and their loved ones. With just one photo shoot in a booth where some 100 cameras are installed, the program finishes scanning the model from all angles. After the machine combines all the data, it finishes the figure by stacking up around 1,000 thin layers of gypsum powder and spraying ink on the surface. The size of the figures can vary from 5 centimeters to 30 centimeters, with price tags ranging from $26 to $260. Because of the simple process and relatively affordable price, the popularity of creating these 3D figures is rising in Korea. I have to leave the country to educate my children abroad, and I thought that making these figures would help keep my husband company. I was amazed because it looked exactly like my children. I think it could comfort me every time I miss them. This latest technology is expected to act as a new type of record that can reflect and remind people of the precious moments they want to cherish. Kim mo Arirang News.
Well, that's all we have for now on this Monday morning here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for watching. We'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts on next scheduled bulletin coming up at 10 a.m. Korea time. So until then, goodbye.